Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Dado Banatao. Hello. I don't have slides, so you just have to look at me. <laughs> but I, I am with you. I am Filipino. But it's nice to be here more times now than uh, the last 15 years or 40 years that I've been in, in California. Instead of talking about my experiences, because a lot of you guys have uh, heard some of that already, I, I would like to talk about the basic things that maybe in general gets one to do the things that I've done in Silicon Valley especially, arguably one of the most competitive uh, technology innovation in the world. But with some basic things, I think one can compete. Uh, there are roughly, in my uh, point of view, there are four phases um, for an entrepreneur to, do, to be able to do some of the things that I've done. First is proper training or education, meaning formal education. So we go through the normal um, universities, I guess, in, uh, involved in engineering. Uh, but even before that, uh, as a young kid, I, I observed that I had the passion for math and science um, and a few other technical things. And uh, as you go into high school, you see it more because you get more challenges and so on. And I believe that education, in fact, is the greatest equalizer for everyone. In some cases, in fact, when I interview CEOs for one of my companies that need one, there was, it's not often that I ask this question, but I felt compelled to ask about two, um, you know, on two occasions, what was your GPA? And simply because of my belief that school is, is the first challenge in anyone's life. Everyone is treated well. You go to school and learn the lesson, and then you're given a test. And assuming that one does not cheat, it's, it's an evidence of what one can do, what one can learn, and your knowledge, basically, how good you really are. So I believe that as one leads through life and being an entrepreneur and so on, you really uh, rely on those instincts, on that knowledge that you've learned through school. And then you go into the university system, you are even more challenged and then graduate school, even worse. I have to tell you that my first quarter at Stanford, I actually thought, what did I do to myself? In a school that accepts only 1% of all applicants. You're competing with the best engineers or students coming from all over the world uh, and in the US. But thank God there was this thing called Thanksgiving weekend. Four days, I was able to recover for finals. But I mention this only simply because uh, school, one more time, assuming that it is challenging enough, where you are, you are truly tested, the natural part of you comes out. And I found that at that point in time, after I got, I've gone through that first quarter and, went and was able to compete, uh, I am a natural engineer, and I still say that today. I would have to say that that formal training enabled me to get to my next phase. Um, and so the first phase of my career as an entrepreneur and now a venture capitalist is defined by implementing or practicing the things that I've learned in school, even from first grade, because it's a complete buildup of what you know how to do at any point in time. So you rely on your instincts, of course, some level of risk taking in the next phase, next phase, I mean. But you, you have that uh, further training. You know, you practice what you learned in school. You can do designs, you lead projects, you try to innovate. As Chair said, it's, it's a, a lot of innovation if you want to compete. <clears throat> But as an individual contributor, you have to perform. Then you gain confidence that you can actually outdo the next engineer sitting beside you or across the room. And then you, you do bigger projects. In my first company at National Semiconductor, I, uh, there was a time after about a year in 
um, as an individual contributor, I, I went to the director and said, I want the toughest design in the company. Of course, he looked at me and, are you crazy or something? <laughs> Knowing that there are a lot of senior engineers there, but truly I meant that because uh, at that time we were into this um, sector of semiconductor that we now call microprocessors. It was a very new um, combination of understanding computer architecture and know how to design a chip. And what I, what I studied at Stanford was a combination of biosolid state and computer architecture and so on. So all I wanted to do was put that whole computer on a chip. And since it was new in the company and I, I did a lot of software in my first project with them, uh, I did work with the more traditional chip designers and when I looked at what they were doing, it's all done by hand and I said, all right, let's put some software in here. Otherwise, it'll take us five years to finish this project. My first year in the project, I wrote all the software, did all the algorithms and so on and it worked. But so that's when I went to the director. So there is built up knowledge in training, continuous training, continuously challenging yourself. Similar to when you go to a, an excellent, very challenging school like Stanford. You, you really are challenged. Even in your career, you have to challenge yourself. And then the next phase, which is even harder, my next phase in my career is being an entrepreneur. Cher uh, and I share a lot of experiences here where you know, we did the first uh, PC chipset in Silicon Valley, and I did work with ITRI. They wanted to work with me so that I can license to them the very first chipset for the PC. And I said, fine. So they were supposed to give me some money, but some engineer at ITRI said, oh no, we can do this. So anyway, we scraped the bottom of the barrels, they say, and we finally did our chipset, and the rest is history. When I left Chips and Technologies to start S3, which is the first graphics acceleration in the PC industry, Chips was already at about 650 million run rate in revenues. But see, this is the kind of thing that is a good point here, meaning I never felt as an entrepreneur that I should stay at one company, even if, it is, if uh, I was a uh, founder there. Because there are so many challenges. Again, there was a point that Chair mentioned about challenges. Adversity creates opportunities. So because I was very familiar with the architecture of the PC, the graphics at that point in time was so poor that I quit uh, my company and started this, this graphics acceleration and introduced this local bus concept for speeding up everything. And we enjoy that today. That architecture is still there today. I'm sure it's moved on to other platforms. But I, I'm mentioning this only because you continuously challenge yourself, but in challenging yourself, you learn more. And so there was a point in time that I felt as an entrepreneur, there is nothing more that I can prove that I cannot do as an entrepreneur. That's really bragging, frankly, but it's really what I thought. I became a venture capitalist because then I can deal with multiple companies. And I'm glad to say that, uh, you know, the first few funds and it was very successful. Uh, for those in, I'm sure Sharon you know some of these companies, Marvell, I was the first investor there, worked with the team, Surf, and a whole bunch of others. Um, but that's more a training. I am still learning how to invest in technology companies. So for those of you guys who think that, you know, being successful is about discovering or thinking something in the shower or whatever, no. It is a series of training, uh, developing confidence that you can do it will lead you eventually to doing a lot of those things that seemingly are so difficult and impossible to do. It can be done even in a, a sector of the industry that is so tough, which is technology. So those are the things that I had taken away from all of these uh, modest successes uh, in my career in Silicon Valley. Thank you.